This is Anarchast. Hey, peaceful people. Welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I have coming in from London, Gregory Sams. Very interesting person. I met him through Doug Casey. Uh, he's got a, a quite a very interesting history. Uh, he actually was the first person who created the veggie burger. Uh, he uh, opened a, the first uh, natural food uh, store or restaurants in um, in the UK in 1967. Uh, he actually used to go to uh, Doug Casey's old Eris Society conferences, and that's how he knew Doug Casey, I believe. And but uh, most importantly, he's just coming out with a book called "The State Is Out of Date." Uh, we can do it better, uh, which uh, we'll definitely talk about that. And it sounds like it's a, it's a great book. So we're going to get into all of that. But first, Gregory, how did you become an anarchist? Um, I don't know if I ever became an anarchist. The word is so kind of means so many different things to different people today. But I was really impressed by Lao Tzu when I read him. Uh, it's like 14, 15 years old. And I, I was only after I'd finished writing The State is Out of Date that I found out he sometimes referred to as the world's first anarchist. Um, somebody who read my, I mean, I, I called the first, first version of this, it's been upgraded, which I came out with in 1998, was called Uncommon Sense, subtitled The State is Out of Date. And that was in tribute, obviously, to Thomas Paine's Common Sense. Because he pointed out we didn't need a king, turned a t tax revolt into the American Revolution. And I'm really pointing out here that we don't actually need the government because, you know, America started off great because the government was really small. But then eventually it just grew big and big. And ultimately it doesn't matter how you choose who's saying you do this or I'm going to damage you somehow. Because that's the mechanism that is at fault, not how you pick who carries the big stick. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm a great believer in freedom, and I don't really want to attach isms or ists to myself because people get weird ideas. And I think freedom is, is the natural state for the world. And everywhere we, we look, we see freedom like in the rainforest, self-organizing, everything kind of finds its place and you get a stable, balanced system. You get water molecules doing it in weather systems. We do it as well. And as you well know, we've had thousands of years of human history without the top-down state where free people took look after themselves and had civilization at the same time. So I, I, I only found out about Kropotkin after I wrote Uncommon Sense, somebody said, hey, you remind me of Kropotkin. I said, wow. I looked him up. I, I started to read the guy. I said, hey, I dig this stuff. Um, so I, maybe I've been an anarchist all my life. My dad told me always keep off the beaten track. I've always done different things. I've never had great respect for authority when, when, they don't, when they're patently wrong about stuff. So... <laughs> I mean, I think we're all anarchists, but we get trained otherwise to think that we need shepherds uh, running, telling us where to go, and sheepdogs barking at us when we don't listen to them. <laughs> yeah, I agree. In general, I think we're all born anarchists, and uh, then we get kind of colluded and uh, distorted over time, and, uh, and uh, all the propaganda, the media, and the government. And of course, they act, you brought up that you don't like to use isms or is, uh, and of course, they co-opt all these words, so the word anarchist. He means uh, different things to different people all around the world. So it is a tough word uh, for that reason, but we're trying to bring it back to actually its original meaning, which just means no rulers, which means it yeah. doesn't, doesn't mean yeah. no rules. It just means no rulers. You're not forced uh, to be underneath somebody if you don't want to be. And uh, that's basically all it is, a very uh, peaceful yeah. uh, ideology. <clears throat> I, I agree. I mean, I... I spent many years, a few decades, in the natural food industry, selling organic foods. And I used to think, well, it's a shame we have to call this organic, because that's <laughs> the natural state. You know? And it's only because we've had all these pharaohs and popes and kings and presidents and stuff that we have to then give a name to that which was the natural state before all of that, to distinguish it, I guess. Yeah, it's funny, all these words, like uh, the word liberal in the U.S., um, that word liberal used to basically mean libertarian, uh, but now it means you like uh, 
you know, stealing money from people and giving it to other people. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, all crazy. these words, yeah. What does that I say? Would, I would, if I was feeling in a happy spirits on a sunny day, I wouldn't tell people I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of these words. Uh, and, of course, uh, that's a big way that the government over time has co-opted and, uh, and uh, really uh, been able to... Uh, uh, manipulate people is because they've uh, really co-opted a lot of these words. Um, and w when you when they take away a lot of these words, it really gets hard for people to communicate. <laughs> and uh, and when right. people don't even understand what the other person's saying, and that's what they do. But I think thanks to the internet, that people are getting access to uh, more information, and so they can't control all these words and and do those things as much as they used to be able to do. So that's that's one good thing. Yeah, there is the much greater potential to be free and be informed if you're willing to step outside of the pen. <laughs> yeah, and it is a pen. And uh, I can tell you that you're not from England unless you're really uh, faking an American accent there. But uh, how did you end up in England? Uh, my parents brought me here when I was three years old and somehow I managed to uh, keep the accent. Don't ask me how. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the state is out of date. Uh, we can do it better. It sounds like it's great. Uh, what's uh, some of the main uh, things that you cover in that book? Well, I make the point that we've tried so many different formats of top-down rule. You know, right from pharaohs to presidents and everything in between. And none of them have worked. They all They all fail. And I don't know if you, you probably heard of Andrew J. Galambo's, the Free Enterprise Institute. No, I haven't. Um, well, I took a course with him in the 70s, and he taught me two real things. Well, he taught me loads of things. He taught me about the power of freedom, just how important it is for people to be free to exercise their will in a uh, non-coercive manner. So he also made it really clear to me how impossible it is to use coercion as a tool for positive and sustainable social evolution. Um, even, you know, I've got feelings about organic foods and various things, but, you know, I, I know that the answer is not to go in and subsidize organic farmers and tax people who eat more sugar than they think they should be eating in their diet. I mean, that is not the way to do it. Um, and he also taught me this principle about the profitability of morality and the morality of profitability. And I was kind of, I took that on board and I, and I really got it when I was, read the, um, his book called The Golden Archers, and Ar sorry, The Golden Arches. And here I am, the creator of the Veggie Burger, and I read the story of McDonald's and Ray Kroc. And I see the reason he put McDonald's on the map is he was a moral operator. Um, and he, he really had integrity. He did deals with handshakes. He didn't screw people. He didn't change people's contracts because somebody was offering him a little bit better deal. He really made sure the McDonald's shops were kept clean. And, um, and I was like, was, God, I, I didn't really want to. I ended up often being a defender of McDonald's and here I would never, I would never touch their product or go into a McDonald's but, but I see how they got there and um, so God I'm forgetting what the question was no, I've gone I was just this. asking you what the book's generally about yeah so it's um, and it really does point out how we do do it better how everything that we have in this world everything we cherish from you know, airplanes to smartphones, music to the clothes we wear, and all of, our, all of this stuff was created by human beings, not by the state. You know, the state, we have to credit with beet, sugar, and radar. Um, <laughs> and all they do is come in and That was pretty expensive beets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. I think it was Napoleon did that. And... Uh, we just do so much, and and the state is such a small player in that. It's really not the main player on the field, but when you open the newspapers, all we read about is government this, government that, busting this, busting that, new laws for stuff, and it's, it's just crazy because we've done all this stuff on our own. And we created the international airline industry out of two bicycle mechanics. 
I'm sorry, t- yeah, in, in the Wright brothers. So <clears throat> it's just, and we have done it in many ways. And uh, so it's a very positive book in that sense. And my main message is, we've just, is to stop expecting the state to do things because so many people think you have to have that top-down control in order to solve the problems of the world. And we see that they don't do that. They don't solve the problems of the world. They, you know, they spend more, more energy creating biofuel than the biofuel delivers. And that's the government getting involved in saving the environment. In Europe, we had a crazy situation where fish stocks were going down. The European Union said, we've got to do something. So they implemented these controls, which resulted in fishermen throwing away half of their catch dead back into the ocean. And that went on for years and years. It's still going on, but it's going to stop in a few months. And that was only because one TV celebrity chef made it his mission. When he found out it's going on, he spent two or three years campaigning in his programs. And eventually, the European Union said, okay, well, we're going to have to do something about this, and uh, they're, they're doing something about it. I don't know if it'll be any better. Yeah, please don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's Jeff, Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine, and somebody else took claim to, you know, that government is best which governs at least. <laughs> yeah, and not at all is even the best case scenario. And you brought up so many great, yeah, you you brought some great points. Uh, uh, first of all, about newspapers, and I, I've kind of been wondering lately if uh, if there was no government, uh, what would be in the news? Because it's all government stuff. Every you look at the the top headlines. The president said this today. This scandal happened with this politician. This this happened here. Oh, they're going to crack down on this. It's like what what would actually be news? I'd just be pretty much oh something happened here today. A couple of people died on a roller coaster or something, and it'd be pretty. Pretty, you know, and I think so much of that is, uh, you know, uh, it really warps people because they kind of think that all this stuff is going on all the time and it's crazy. I can't keep up. And but it, most of it's just all BS from government just causing problems. And you talked about how they uh, destroyed half the fish stocks. Uh, that government does that all the time. They did that during the Great Depression. They, I forget the exact details, but there was something about milk was too cheap or and there was some sort of milk lobby and so the government during the great depression when a lot of people were having a lot of pr- problems <laughs> eating threw out like all the milk they just poured it into the streets like this is what government does it, I, i'm amazed that there's not more of those sort of environmentalists um uh, who uh, you know i generally don't like too much in general uh, a lot of them because a lot of them seem very anti-human but uh, there's a lot of good uh, um uh, people who have good intentions who uh, believe in the environment, of course, we all would like to see the environment be as as uh, healthy and as beautiful as possible. That's great. But the way they go about it is just totally wrong. And I'm amazed there hasn't been more environmentalists who have become anarchists. Because if you look at all the damage done to the environment, uh, it's almost always government. You're talking about nuclear bomb tests all throughout the uh, 20th century. Just blowing mm-hmm. up nuclear bombs. I saw a, a photo of like this family watching on their porch in Las Vegas, this atomic bomb being blown blown up in the desert they're like 20 miles away uh, I know. you know no one seemed to you know think that was an issue and uh, the, the government is just constantly causing problems and it's just amazing that uh, I think people are starting to wake up to that I don't know what you think about that and you're, you're kind of involved in the more natural organic foods which we, um, like you said unfortunately we have to say that because most of the food isn't uh, but uh, and a, a lot of that's caused by the government again uh, especially with Monsanto and all that kind of stuff um, what, what's your thoughts on uh, environmentalism and uh, maybe those sort of people kind of waking up that their biggest uh, uh, sort of enemy, like for example, the uh, the biggest, you know, they're very against oil for whatever reason, which is kind of ridiculous, but uh, because we kind of need it still, uh, and and of course the government has stopped all all sorts of better uh, technologies from coming to the market, like thorium and things like that. Uh, but uh, do you think some of these environmental sort of people um, might start to wake up that, uh, for example, I'm sorry to keep talking here, but I keep thinking yeah. of things, but uh, the Greenpeace founder, he quit Greenpeace because they were so insane. And uh, he's come out against Greenpeace now. And, um, and he says uh, what they're saying is totally wrong. That this, this whole uh, carbon tax and all that kind of stuff. He said, you know, nuclear reactors could easily uh, solve m- many of these problems about, you know, coal plants putting uh, pollution into the air and things like that. What, tell me some of your thoughts on what I've just said. 
Well, I am horrified at the government's involvement in in power, power generation. Um, to me, the, the, the greatest threat actually facing humanity is nuclear power itself. And the just the risk that that entails of, of you know, if you had a major CME, 100 nuclear power plants could go down all at once. I mean, it's just, it's an unthinkable hazard and no insurance company in the world will insure a nuclear power plant. And it's only because the state says, yes, it's okay, we'll cover any, anything that goes down. Um, That's been going well in Japan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, with the, uh, the Yakuza in charge of you know, supplying the staff for it. Um, and I, I do despair at environmentalists who say we want the government to tax this or tax that because they just rub their greedy hands and say, yeah, great, more, th more reasons to tax. We've got a whole bunch of so-called green taxes in the UK. Um, so, yeah, I, I think as people we are able to sort this stuff out. I often point out to people too that it was the Brazilian government that had to build the roads into the Amazon for the cattle farmers and the loggers to go and exploit it. It's governments who sell mining companies the, the rights to go in and mine gold on land that people have been living on happily for maybe a thousand years. They just don't have pieces of paper saying that that's their land. Um, and then when they protest against it, it's not the, 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 the mining companies who go in and shoot or kill the indigenous or move, forcibly move out the indigenous people. They can't get away with that. When corporations shoot strikers, I think, I know the Ford Motor did that. I don't remember whether it was the 20s or the 30s. And they got so much shit for that. Um, I mean, as the chairman of, of Mozilla, Firefox, had to resign a couple days ago because he donated money to the anti-gay marriage campaign. You know, people are really sensitive about what corporations do. But when they have a piece of paper from the government saying, yeah, you can go do this, and then the government goes and sends in the troops or the police to, to, to quell popular you know, resistance... That's when the real shit gets done, not to mention, you know, illegal wars in Iraq and support. I mean, it's just the stuff that the state is out there doing and facilitating is, is the real problem because corporations still do have to supply a product. And I'm, I'm not a fan of big corporations, but I... I'm amazed that oil companies can go out into the middle of the ocean or not or into the ocean, dig wells, bring up oil, refine it, deliver it to us for when you take the tax out less than the cost of bottled water. I mean, that's that's a really impressive thing to do. Um, and, and we need that. So yeah, you brought up a great point earlier about the uh, profitability of morality and the morality mm -hmm. of profitability. And, of course, that word profit has really been uh, manipulated. And it's sort of a lot of people think of that as a bad word. I really I, I don't know if you know this, but there's uh, they polled like U.S. college students and they said, what would you really like to do? And like a big like one of the top ones was work for a nonprofit organization. It's like, yeah, we don't want to create any wealth. <laughs> we just want to, you know, no one makes any money it's like th this whole yeah. anti-capitalist sort of uh, idea this uh, uh, it's very pervasive still in a lot of places and uh, this whole communist idea and he actually brought up at the very beginning he said that you know we've tried all these things if you actually look at human history we've tried all the the royalty sort of things the kings and we've tried even the, the church running stuff and mm -hmm. uh, then we you know communism has been tried so many times and still is in some places uh, Venezuela is seeing the effects of that right now um, it's really amazing because no one really looks at that and says, okay, given all this evidence, what is the best way for humans to organize or for humanity to, to basically coexist? And, and uh, you know, be, what's the best possible case for humans? Uh, if you look at the evidence, it's, it's definitely none of those things. It's just like communism's killed hundreds of millions of people and they still keep trying to do it and all these uh, wonky ideas. And they really, they really uh, you know, what happens, I think, a lot is the central banks print so much money 
and then prices go up and a lot and the people who uh, mostly get the benefit of that are people with assets so mostly the, the richer people and then the, the the people who have no assets they don't get the benefit of it and so then they say oh we have to keep re raising minimum wage and there's this thing in the US now that uh, you know, we can't afford uh, to even work at McDonald's anymore. We have to double the minimum wage. And uh, people get really, uh, and then what they say is, well, it's all these greedy corporations. They're, they're mm -hmm. all just, you know, taking all the money for themselves. But that's actually not what's causing most of it. Most of it's caused by the government and the central bank. So there's so much uh, bad ideas out there. But I, I hope that people are starting to uh, actually, uh, you know, learn about some of these things. I think thanks to the internet, people do have access to information. They're not just watching the BBC every night and, and getting their propaganda direct from the uh, government. Absolutely. And I mean, you're right. There is a huge groundswell against capitalism. And what people are, I mean, I, I understand what people are against. And I, I don't try and defend capitalism. I defend free enterprise. Uh, if, if you Google free enterprise, it'll take you to capitalists because they're, called, they're considered synonyms. Um, but for me, free enterprise is just the freedom for people to engage with each other however they like and exchange goods. And you see that happening with Sky B&B, &B, which has just been a sensation. It's been valued at $10 billion today. Um, and capitalism, it, it implies the pursuit of of money beyond everything else. That's what people read into the world. And they see the greedy bankers manipulating our currencies. They see the large corporations and that are you know, getting government subsidies and you know, making arms and stirring wars up. And they, they identify that as capitalism. And it's like the state-supported you know, greed for money above all else. Whereas free enterprise albeit a cinnamon, synonym to capitalism, that is about people being free to do what they like, to, to open up their own house, to, to sell food to people for money, um, to grow tobacco or marijuana in your backyard and sell it to people. Um, I mentioned it in my, in my book when I was in uh, Morocco years ago. I saw a kid on a street corner with a packet of cigarettes, and he was selling cigarettes one by one to passers-by, and he was about 14 years old. And he would be breaking so many laws if he did that in America or this country. But that was free enterprise, that a, a kid can get into business on his own for the price of a packet of cigarettes. So I really, and, and also, you know, people don't like profit, but every transaction, every good transaction, this is something that Professor Galambos taught me, both sides make a profit. Because because when I spend, you know, a, a, a dollar for a, for a piece of broccoli, to me that that sprig of broccoli is worth more than do, the dollar in my pocket. I'm making a profit out of that extra, transaction, mm -hmm. and of course, whoever's selling the broccoli values my dollar more more than that piece of greenery. So you know, it's a profit on both sides in most transactions, and there's nothing dirty about it. But again, it's been given a dirty word. Um, by people who associate it with uh, that excessively greedy capitalism. Yeah, and that's again another word that's been totally uh, co-opted and ma manipulated mm. is the word capitalism. And so many people today think that what is in the US or the UK or most of the world is capitalism and it really mm -hmm. isn't at all. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. and oh. I, I call it crapitalism. And, and uh, yeah. You brought up some good points, and I, I almost wonder if we should start just using different words because it's, it's so hard to get people to understand what these words, what, what our uh, understanding of these words are, like capitalism, we just see that as being free exchange. Uh, anarchism, we just see it as uh, not initiating violence against right. others and not wanting others to initiate violence against you. But to a lot of the world still, anarchists, to them, means that uh, it's violent overthrow of the government. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, they think that capitalism is... Ex uh, you know, um, um, exploiting uh, consumers, uh, which it totally is. And then you brought up a great point that needs to be said more that actually every transaction, unless you're dealing with insane people, uh, actually has profit for both sides or they wouldn't enter into it, unless they're being coerced by the government, of course. So uh, paying your taxes is not a, 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 a two-way profitable transaction at all. Uh, but uh, if it is an actual uh, not uncoerced transaction, every single tra transaction that's ever happened, unless someone's completely insane, uh, is, and even if they are insane, the, the, you know, 
who's to say they are insane? Maybe maybe that's yeah. what they really want. That's, if they want to give a thousand dollars, that's right. That's their judgment. They should be allowed yeah. to do that. Uh, it's unfortunate if uh, it doesn't work out for them, and that happens all the time, of course. But uh, you have to let people do these things. And uh, so I wonder. There there is words that uh, maybe we should start using more. Of course, a word that a lot of anarchists call themselves now is voluntarists or voluntarists. Uh, and I think that word is quite interesting because uh, it's really hard to uh, to get offended or angry about that word because if anyone asks well what is a what is a voluntarist or a voluntarist uh, you would say well i think all transactions should be voluntary and i think most people would agree with that so it doesn't bring in the stigma of the of the anarchist word and then of course there's the word agorist which means you just want all transactions to be uncoerced and in the free market and, and have nothing to do with a government mm -hmm. which is coercion so uh, I do call myself an anarcho-capitalist, I call myself an anarchist, uh, but uh, I totally understand why a lot of people call themselves uh, voluntarists and agorists, uh, because it is really hard to get past uh, those words with some people. And, mm -hmm. and capitalism is another great example. Well, I will, uh, I, I love capitalism, and I will be pulling people up when they start attacking capitalism. I said, <laughs> no, no, that's capitalism, I like that. Uh, but back to something we were saying earlier, you know, I think, if we had genuine free enterprise, not a system, free enterprise, free enterprise, in our society, we wouldn't have these corporate, so many corporate behemoths, like the, the oppressing people and, and creating monopolies that upset people, because you would have this natural competition. It, it's so hard to start up as a small business today and comply with all the regulations that are required. and. So you get you know chains of restaurants and chains of stores because you know for the individual shop, you know restaurant owner to to comply with everything you have to comply it's not it's not easy and that's and of course governments love corporations because they can take the money out of you know tens of thousands of people's pocket through one agency it's so much easier than trying to get tax out of everybody after they've made the money as well um, and. What have we got here? Um, oh, I can't read my notes there. Um, <laughs> well, actually, talking about yeah. uh, how um, uh, this system, this totally non-free market system, really yeah. distorts everything in life. I was thinking about that recently as well. I was thinking, you know, you drive through the U.S. and it's just like every mile or two, you see the exact same restaurants. It's like McDonald's, uh, yeah. Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Subway, and... Um, a lot of that's caused, like you just said, by the government because it, it makes it so hard for people to enter in and compete with these things. And, and so a lot of it all just gravitates to these a few companies who have all the, the power and control uh, that they can uh, uh, do those things. And of course, I think in a, in a free market world, there would still be chains uh, because there is definitely something that people like about uh, 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 feeling like they, they know what they're going to get. So, you know, I do actually, if I'm in a strange place and I don't know what the food is and I'm kind of confused, yeah. I usually Usually, I'm quite experimental, and I, I'm not fearful of trying different things. But there is something nice about just going into a restaurant. You know exactly like Subway. You know mm -hmm. what's going to be there. You know what you're going to get. And and so there there would be room for that, and that probably would exist. But it wouldn't exist anywhere near like today with uh, these just mega franchises. Uh, they just uh, there'd be more competition, and they wouldn't be able to do uh, and grow as big as they can. And, and some people might think that's a bad thing. They they might say, oh, well, we we should uh, have a way that people can make billions and billions of dollars. And that's fine if they do, but the way that they do it is, is through this system that is very uh, non-voluntary and it's very coercive and it's stealing money from people all the time and it's using violence to stop people from doing other things. And, and that has ended up now with the U.S. where John Stossel estimated that to start a lemonade stand as a kid in the U.S., it'll take you about a couple months and cost about $40,000 in regulations and, and yeah, fees. Yeah. And you see it all the time in the U.S. that cops actually come to kids' lemonade stands. This happens. This is unbelievable really? oh yeah you can look it up on youtube just there's an entire movement about it called uh something lemonade um free lemonade or something because kids can't even start a lemonade stand because the government comes they say do you have your health inspection and it's like a kid sitting there with two cups and a couple of lemons <laughs> it's absolutely absolutely surreal and and as a as a whole food natural eating and healthy eating advocate myself I, I see it as doubly comic because the government's doing all this to keep our food safe. <laughs> They're monitoring our safety, and what we end up with is, is nothing but burgers and fries <laughs> and milkshakes and, so, and soft drinks, you know, and you know, junk food. 
Um, okay, if you like junk, I've got nothing against people eating whatever the hell they like, but um, but but you know we get channeled into this really unhealthy food because they're trying to keep our food safe, and then of course there's a lovely pharmaceutical industry who's you know, enforcing uh, how you can look after your health. I mean, what could be more personal than your health and how you look after it? And to have the government ban all sorts of all sorts of other treatments, you know, for your safety. And and uh, you know, we we know now that the third largest cause of death is iatrogenic things that happen because you went into hospital or saw the doctor <laughs> or reacted badly to the drugs they prescribed you. The third major cause of death. Yet I guarantee you, if one 20-year-old mother in, in Minnesota dies from taking too much of some herbal remedy, that will start, they'll, they'll ban it. They'll, we've got to ban it, you know, somebody die. Yeah, SWAT teams will come in and be knocking down doors and uh, it's crazy. Everything to do with government is crazy and I just wonder why more people don't see that truth. Uh, almost all the problems in the world today, and I, I hate to almost sound like a, like a, you see a lot of these guys, like crazy people, and they're like, government did it, government did it. But actually, in most cases, the government caused all these problems. Absolutely. <laughs> and actually, just to briefly say, uh, because at, right at the very beginning, you said something I thought was important. You said that uh, using violence to, uh, to do things uh, doesn't work uh, well. It's, it's a bad way of uh, trying to accomplish a goal. And, and because the government, at, it, at its very core, is violence and theft, um, almost everything they do always has negative uh, repercussions in the end. Uh, because trying to do anything uh, through violence and theft is not a good, wholesome way to to actually accomplish anything, and and that's what government does, and uh, and you see the results. It's just uh, just every, almost everything in our world today uh, has been affected by this system, and it's it's always almost always or pretty much always for the negative. Yeah, I mean it's that's the only tool they have, and it's a really good tool to to satisfy what they're here for, which as we said earlier, is to protect us from other versions of themselves. And when Hitler or the Mongols are, you know, are, are trying to invade your land, you've got to be coercive. Or that, that's what it's all about. But when you're running education, food and health, it's not, and, and what wages you're paid and what type of a house you're living in and, and how your toilet flushes, coercion is not the way to do it. Um, and it's, it just, and, and there's no break to it. It just, it, it keeps feeding on itself. The more money that society creates, the more they suck out of it. And there's a great uh, quote from uh, Jean Louis Baptiste, uh, Louis the Fourteenth's finance minister in the 18th century, and he said, "The art of taxation consists of so plucking the goose." as to obtain the maximum amount of feathers with the minimum amount of hissing. And that's it. You know, they take as much as they can get, and, and we're all told it's about redistribution of wealth, or we have to spend the money here or spend the money there, but it's not. It's just take as much as you can get. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I think a big part of it, too, is uh, government uh, schools, uh, because that really, they don't teach you any of these negative things about government at all. And if anything, they, they always try to, you know, you do your Pledge of Allegiance in the U.S. with the president's picture on the wall. And, and then once you graduate with your badge of obedience from uh, the indoctrination camps, uh, then you go to a sporting event and you have to stand for the national anthem. And, you know, it's just constant uh, yeah. pro-government stuff. And now it's even worse. I don't know if you heard about this Common Core in the U.S., this new school uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, it's, it's so outwardly obviously it, like the question will be something like um reword this sentence the president is uh our savior and uh he is uh he has a really tough job and then you have to reword the sentence like the, all these things are in this curriculum now it's just really that's, oh yeah you should look yeah. into it it's crazy well you know what you say i mean another way of looking at it if that is why people are so attached to the state is if you're brought up from a child thinking that all black people are slaves or thinking that, you know, all posh women bind their feet so they can't walk to be, you know, valued. Or, or if you're brought up thinking the earth is flat. You know, that's imbued. You just take it for granted. 
even if you're a kind, benevolent, thoughtful person, you take it for granted and people just assume that the state is an inevitable part of being human and we have to have it there. And it's being, I, I, I can't believe what you just told me about having the sentences in school books. That well, is scary. It's just worse than even I said. It. It's, just, it's crazy stuff. Like uh, the, the math part of it will be something like if uh, the government had uh, five eggs and, uh, you know, the, uh, the president had three eggs, how many eggs would these great people have? <laughs> like, it's, it's so outwardly, like, ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> and, then, oh. and then to actually do the math equation, they don't actually do it traditionally. Like, the normal way that we kind of learned how to do math and subtraction and stuff like that, they have this ridiculous... I can't even figure it out. I've, I've tried to tr figure out how they come to the answer. And the answer, actually, now in this common core, and actually some states have st are started to say they're not going to do it because it's so ridiculous. Uh, some of the answers, uh, because they want to make everyone uh, the same, like uh, we're all the same. We, no one's better than anyone else. And actually, they punish uh, people who try to be uh, better and get better grades. And uh, so the answer is sort of uh, you can ha have any answer you want, but you have to kind of say how you got that answer, and it has to be friendly. <laughs> like, oh, so, you know, keep your kids out of public schools. Like, it's just uh, Vladimir Lenin, you know, you talk about all these uh, government the status people in the past have all said, like you said about the uh, uh, the uh, French uh, uh, guy, what he said, and they've all said how it all works, uh, but no one seems to notice. So Vladimir Lenin said, uh, give me your child for four years and the seed I plant will never be uprooted. And now it's 12 years and, and more than that in a lot of the Western world. And uh, yeah, that's how they get control of a lot of people's minds is, is through these uh, uh, systems. And it's just terrible. Um, I actually, I'm running out of time. I'm, I'm sorry to say okay. that because I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation, but uh, I have to uh, get on to something else. But uh, why don't you let people know where they can get uh, uh, the state is out of date and anything else you'd like to let them know? Uh, well, my website is gregorysams.com. That's S-A-M-S. -S. And... The book is called The State is Out of Date. You can get it through my website or you can, you can get it through Amazon. If you Google it, you, you'll, it'll come right to the top. I also wrote another book, uh, which you can see about on my website, titled Son of God, S-U-N, which kind of takes the rug out from organized religion as the state is out of date does for the organized state. <laughs> That's great, and that would be a whole other conversation. Maybe we'll have that sometime in the future. So that's been uh, Gregory Sams. We'll have all the links down below. If you like this video, definitely subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, that's uh, or on Facebook. We're on Facebook as well. If you if you enjoyed these kind of conversations, help us spread the word because the more that people wake up to this stuff, uh, the faster that we can get rid of a lot of these problems caused by the state. And the state is out of date, especially in today's digital world. And it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how this uh, next uh, few years and decades progress because there's a lot of things happening so stay tuned to here at Anarchast and uh, we'll keep you up to date on that and also check out the Dollar Vigilante my other website where I talk about a lot of these issues and how to uh, survive and prosper uh, during this uh, <clears throat> very dangerous time for humanity with all the things that the government is doing so that's it for Anarchast your home for anarchy on the internet peace love and anarchy this is Anarchast